Okay. So today's game is going to be a little bit different because this is an older game. Not that old. I wouldn't say like two months old, but at least one month old. But the problem with this game was that uh, OBS didn't record, so I didn't know what to didn't record um, sound. So I didn't know what to do with this. So I just kept it in the backlog just in case. And I think I found the perfect thing to do with this gameplay. Now, today I want to talk about something a little bit different than what I usually do. Instead of focusing on the gameplay and focusing on actually the game, I want to use this as a background and talk about myself a little bit. So, recently I uploaded a video which I titled Solo Collecting, and I promise you, I promise each and every person who's watching or listening, I did not watch Solo Leveling until then, and I did not realize what joke I did that went well with that video, because that, uh... As you all know, well, a lot of you who are subscribed to this channel, a lot of people are not, but, you know, that's okay. I love every single person equally. My subscribers I love more, but, you know, it is what it is. And it says here that I love games and anime, and I love you guys. And I actually mean every single word that's in my bio. So... Today I'm going to focus a little bit on what I've been watching this week, and that would be, of course, solo leveling. And let me just say, it actually is phenomenal, and it is amazing. Now, I want to, sp I I want to split this video into three parts. One, where I talk to people who have not watched it. Two, that I talk to people who have watched the anime. And three, talking to people who have finished the manhwa. Now... Manwa is basically like manga, except it comes from Korea. That's pretty much the only difference. Otherwise, they're both very much similar. So, talking about the manga... No, not the manga. For people who haven't watched it and are on the fence of watching it or not, there have been a lot of Korean-based manwas that have been trash, like God of the Tower of God and uh, God of High School. Sorry, not sorry, both of them are not good. They're just very boring uh, fantasy shonen. There is no substance to them in my personal opinion. And yes, yes, I've read the manhwas. Yes, I've watched the animes. Listen, if it's your cup of tea, it's your cup of tea. I'm not going to tell you what to like and what not to like. But in my personal opinion, it's not good. Now, moving on to, to back to talking about the man, the man, uh, not the man, uh, solo collecting. Solo collecting is basically a gore uh, fantasy. Uh, I'm not going to say what else yet because I, I don't want to give too much away, but it has a similar ranking system to how One Punch Man is, but the the sole difference is. You can't really grow in terms of power. You have magical qualities, and those your magical qualities are basically determine where you set in the in the world where you're a hunter and you raid uh, dungeons. It's very similar to WoW to to a degree because you're always doing raids, but it differs quite a bit because that uh, unlike your regular shown in fantasy uh there is a huge element of gore like to a fault but it's not it's very uh, enjoyable i find it to be very fun and if you're into like shown in fantasies that has a lot of, that has gore but is but actually has substance to it i would recommend it it's 12 episodes for season 1. Season 2 is about to come out. I don't know. Soon they announced uh they announced season 2 already and uh I've already read the manhwa and uh it's looking legit. The animation is good. The voice acting is off the charts. Uh if you're not convinced yet what kind of anime it will be, look up 
uh solo leveling ost i think it's i think the song is called level two that song alone is enough to pers- was enough to persuade me to watch it and uh by the way i haven't watched it until after i posted that video so remember it's still fresh in my mind and i think it's amazing i'd give it a seven out of ten for me seven out of ten is actually high because i'm actually very picky about ranking animes because a lot of people like to give animes high scores and then forget what it is after two months like uh the slime anime that came back out in like 2019 or 18 or something like that i gave it a six out of ten back then looking back it's even a 5.5 out of 10. Uh, the highest score I give anime uh, anime at the moment is always 7 out of 10. If I give an anime a 7 out of 10, that means I really liked it at the moment. But in the future, it's, it could go down. That's the truth. Now, this is where I'm going to end for talking about the anime without spoilers to all the people who haven't watched it yet. The next segment is for the people who have watched it in the first uh, season. If you aren't that person, click away. It is absolutely fine. No hard feelings. Now, let's talk about the anime of season one. It is so good. The animation is amazing. Once again, it doesn't compare to the manhwa, but has anime ever compared to manga before? The source material? Because the sole difference is when you're creating a show, you put less effort into each frame and you put more effort into the animation. And the animation is actually pretty good. I understand why people like it. The voice acting, oh my god. The voice acting is spot on. Jing Wu has an amazing voice actor. He is committed. Let me tell you, he is committed. I have never seen somebody more committed than Jing Wu. Now, season one, it doesn't wrap up until episode six, let's be honest, until he actually becomes, well, if you haven't completed it yet, I urge you to complete it because I will be getting into spoilers. So you've been warned, you've been warned that I'm going to be talking in detail about a lot of things in the anime. In episode six, come on, after he kills a spider, that scene with the hunters, Oh my god, where he kills all six. And if you haven't read the manhwa, I'm not going I'm going to talk later on in the video about stuff that happens in the manhwa too. So talking about what happens in the manhwa later on is a bit of a spoiler. But let me tell you something. The author of the show, of the of the whole story, thought it through. And now I'm not gonna lie, there's a lot of uh elements in this in the story that you see in other shows like the whole uh script on the commandments now one spoiler from the manhwa that i'm going to reveal that isn't really a spoiler but you'll understand what i mean is that in the show the commandments are written in korean in the manhwa they're written in uh in hebrew i think so that should give you an idea of what the author was going for. Once again, I don't think that's really a spoiler because that never shows up in the show, but still episodes one through four were actually pretty good. Like episodes one, episode one and two were amazing. Let's be honest. Like the whole thing with the statue. Oh my God. And the other statues and running towards uh, the singing statues. Woo! That was really enjoyable. I like the fact that there is uh, gore in those episodes. I think, I think gore in that scene actually elevated uh, the scene quite a lot. But overall, it was amazing. Not to mention when later on when we get to the picnic episode. <laughs> that was shaky. <laughs> Whatever. Everybody's like, you're getting, you're, you're, you're getting uh, paid like 3 million of our Korean currency per day. Not per day, per portal. But you get to just lounge around. We're only doing this because there is a uh, requirement of 8 people per portal. And the truth is that Jinwoo can basically solo these at this point. 
I thought that was cool that I, I, I like when they don't dilly dally around with uh, the whole power system and they just get to the meat and potatoes of everything because then, come on, let's be honest, nobody wants to be around for 17 episodes of Goku screaming in the air, preparing his uh, his final Kamehameha, his ball of energy, whatever. Nobody wants to see that. Everybody wants to get to the meat and potatoes of every single shonen fantasy trash is that they love and i love shonen fantasy trash like any other person and it gets there it actually gets there and i think that is amazing not to mention that it ends in a high note it shows us a lot of uh future uh characters let's be honest all of those uh s rank uh all of those s rank mages that they show off early on we all know they're going to show up later. Like, come on. They're going to be important elements of the show later. And I think that's okay. I think that's even good. And I think that about sums up what I wanted to say about the anime. Because uh, it is amazing. It actually is amazing. Now let's start talking about the next element which is the manhwa. If you haven't read the manhwa, or if you've read up until a certain chapter, I'm going to try to keep it somewhat spoiler-free, but come on. We're talking about the source material. So if you wanna if you wanna click off right now, absolutely understandable, absolutely respectable. You don't have to stay, you can leave, and that's fine. Now, talking about the manhwa, I'm not going to lie. There are some things about manhwa that always annoys me, and that's the fact that there are, in almost every website that you can go and read it, this is just my experience. Between each panel, there is a giant white panel, and I've seen this also in the paid places and also in the unpaid places meaning for some reason the scans always show giant white panels between each pages now mind you this is a webtoon and it, within the webtoon the size difference is major to regular manga because that webtoons have their sizes uh a lot longer than uh than regular pages a4 pages manga pages whatever you want to call it so that's just an annoying element now talking about the manga itself it gets tolkien real quick real fast when i say tolkien i don't mean like the one one ring and whatever a little bit of that but the whole monarchs lords and uh and everything else woof, it is quite different and it is also enjoyable, but on the other hand, it's definitely not a Harry Potter One Piece uh, world, like Mashal. Ma uh, Mashal Magic and Muscles goes one way. This takes a completely different element, where you basically become a god. Like, the whole Shadow Monarch uh, aspect is basically turning Jin Wu into a demigod if you will where they show off later on when with the whole absolute uh being that they were that they were all uh romanticizing later on when he meets the real shadow monarch and he becomes a shadow monarch that whole dream state and then with his father and the ending like if you know you know I'm not gonna go that deep into spoilers because I, I think that's a bit too far but him going through all the raids uh becoming an S rank, then a national uh, level rank, etc, etc. I think it works well within the story. I think overall, the entire story relying on... It's, it's, it's basically, it feels like a self-insert shonen fantasy trash, which is the best shonen fantasy. Like, because you always want to be, like, the cheater. Because that you can see all the time that all the powers that he acquires becomes so cheating that every top player 
not just in Korea, not just in Japan, but the entire world. Yes, I'm talking about also the, what is it, the Jeju Island arc with the ants and whatever. Like, everybody sees just what a cheat this guy is. Because that he has the ability to level up his abilities, which is quite insane. Because that from their perspective, it's like you're born with a certain amount of magical power, and that's the amount of magical power you have. And it's absolutely fine. It doesn't seem like there's any uh, hatred towards E ranks, D ranks, and C ranks. Like, people even revere C ranks and B ranks because that uh, heal B rank healers are considered very good a rank healers s rank healers even one of like the national uh people yuri or orlov who is from russia was considered to be really powerful because uh, even though he was just a support class but he was worth well, how much did he ask for like 3.6 billion dollars for a year and 10 million per day or something like that and i was like and this guy just basically looking to retire after this. He plans to do like one giant raid, buy a bunch of stuff, and then retire. That's how I felt, at least. But regardless, like you can see, like there there isn't content towards weaker people. Like absolute, there is absolute absolute harmony between the non magical people or the people with so such low magical power that they're considered normal people like and uh the people the e-ranks who are basically i shouldn't say useless but they definitely aren't like the top tier people who they're looking for people people are like happy with the ranks because that they think the ranks aren't capable people are happy with c ranks people love c ranks b ranks and above are considered to be like celebrities even like if you're an e, if you're ranked A in in the show, even later on we see you become such a celebrity that just getting evaluated is enough to have a press conference around you. Not to mention S rank, which is like you're not anymore a uh, celebrity; you're more like a god to them. But that's a completely different um, story arc. Regardless, I think this is. This is as much as I want to talk about it to to now. I think I really enjoyed solo leveling. I think it's a 7 out of 10 overall. And if you made it this far, finish the manhwa. You won't regret it. I promise you. And that's about it. See ya.